Irish Willie Vlogs. Welcome back to another First Division, the final First Division show of the year as such. Don't start crying there, Keith. Uh, I know you want the First Division season to continue for as long as possible this year. Um, first game up, Cork City and Bray. Um, yeah, I mean, Cork City, obviously, they played in the open day of the season. We won't talk about that result because I think he's talked about it in the... Uh, the other show, but um, yeah, look, it's um, it's a fantastic occasion in all seriousness, Gavin, for for Cork City, isn't it? To be lifting the title at Turner's Cross, a lot of Cork fans would argue it's not the title they want to be lifting, but you know what I mean. It is what it is, and we are where we are. And Cork need to get back now in the Premier Division and uh, really stake a claim and and stay there ultimately. But um, for now, yeah, it should be a great occasion at Turner's Cross, shouldn't it? Yeah, hopefully, Keith, uh, like I said to Keith Ryan there, that hopefully the weather, if the weather holds off, we're, I know we're due a lot of rain, so hopefully that'll be gone by Friday. Um, like, if it's dry, like, I, I'll be suspecting there'll be probably 6,500 there, I'd be hoping anyway. And, um, that'd be that'd be what I'd be hoping anyway. Like, if they sell it out, you'll be going over the seven mark. Mm. Um, but uh, it'll be fantastic, hopefully. And um, as I said, look, it, like, as we said earlier today, or between ourselves, that like you know, we 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 had to go off Cork City last year early on because things weren't good and things didn't pick up till after the slide after slide on the FEI Cup last year where they got things together and to be fair to Colin and, and the lads in the involved with them there, you know, you know, it's been a fantastic season from um What's so the difference, Cor- uh, Gavin, actually with Cork from last season to season. You think it's simply recruitment? Yeah, I suppose like we I suppose we kinda had this conversation last year, Keith, where like right down the middle of the park, because they had no spine. There's there. a ghost behind you. Well, that's my missus, Keith. She's just quiet. Um, so uh, <laughs> they, 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 they... <laughs> that's the ghost so, of Cork City past. Yeah, yeah, the ghost of Cork City past. Uh, no, sorry, Shh, be quiet. We're having a show. Um, so anyway. Uh, no, I think the difference this year is like David Harrington's had his first full season. Yeah, you know he's been, he's been superb, and obviously he's been linked with Everton. But apparently that's kind of done deal, and he's broke into the Irish underage squad. And as you said yourself, I didn't know much about Ali Gilchrist, but he's been a huge plus this year. Um, also, I suppose look, um, Kevin O'Connor being back as well, just a bit of experience at left back. Um, you know, like I, I. I Unfortunately, I had a lot of criticism for Ronan Hurley. I just don't think he he was up to that standard. And I think Kevin O'Connor, to be fair to him, has um you know there's no doubt about it has made a huge difference. Um, Aaron Bolger has been superb in the middle of the park. He's you know he's he he's one of the under kind of the fella that'll go kind of what do they say under the you know radar. under the, the radar. Sorry, yeah, yeah. I, I think he's going to be that type of player. But he's been his ball retention, his ball passing is absolutely superb. And again, as I've said, again, right down the middle of the spine up front, I think Rory Keaton's been a huge addition. Um, I've, I'm a big fan of him. You know, he's, he's like I've said it before, the right word from him is a pest and mm. strong, powerful, brings the midfield into play. And I think that's been the huge difference this year. Uh, and I suppose as well at that as well, Keith, like I suppose Colin... Gavin, isn't, sense, it mad? isn't it mad that Galway let Keaton go? That's That may have been the difference. Oh, probably Keith. I mean, obviously something must have happened with with John Caulfield and and, and Rory Keating, like, and and obviously mm-hmm. Colin Healy sniffed at that, and you know said that we need somebody up there, and like it was like in in the big games, Rory Keating was there in the big games this year, and that's why I always say we're fellas characters come through, and you know big players come through in the games that you need them, and the big games he turned up. Um, and I think that's that's been the difference. Re- like you know, what any team down the spine of the team, it doesn't matter what level you're playing. If you get the spine of the team yeah. right, everybody else around that you can walk around it, and, and that's the difference with us this year. Absolutely, no, I agree, hundred percent with that. Actually, last comment, especially there, Keith. I suppose for Bray, um, it's a case of now trying to stay at home to Athlone, in which they probably should do because obviously Athlone play Waterford, but we'll get into that later as well. But um, I suppose the simple fact is for Bray is that um, what needs to happen. At Bray Wonders now, come forward. Um, I think Sean and Sean and uh, Gavin alluded to it in the uh, review show the other night. That um, it just hasn't worked this season, and uh, I I really don't lay any blame. And people are probably saying, "Oh, the players are people on the pitch," but I actually don't lay any blame with the players because week after week there's been change after change, and it's been fours and fives rather than ones and twos. Um, there's players playing out of position. There's 
Uh, you know, earlier on this season, we seen to swap our goalkeeper multiple times. Um, you know, so how how you can get a consistent level of performance, like how how two centre halves, if there's two different centre halves playing, how do you get to know each other? How do you get to know where a goalkeeper kicks the ball or whatever? You know, so um, probably the, the easiest thing would be to to change to change the management and then. The manager that comes in mm. will bring his own players in or whatever. You know, and, and Sean said it the other night. A lot of the players that got right to the playoff last season are not there anymore. You know, well, for them at Longford, Keith. A couple of them signed for Longford, yeah. I mean, um four or five, but look, it is what it is, and uh, it's a very disappointing season. Um, mm. You know, there was a little bit of hope. Connor Clifford was the first man to sign back for the club, which was was fantastic. And then players started dribbling in, and you're, you're looking at it, you're like, a lot of these are from Cabin Teeley. They finished second bottom last season. And, you know, we brought Curtis Bourne in, um, who's had had different clubs in the league, and he's been out of the league with TNS and Linfield, you know, and um, a solid player in his day. Um, mm. I, I think Curtis, if he had to played more, he, he would have uh, he would have contributed more for the club in terms of assists and goals. Um, but it just hasn't been consistent enough, Keith. And I don't mean anything with results there or anything like that. Results obviously um, will look after themselves. Um, but team wise, team selections, like we've played thirty two games, or we will play thirty two games on. On Friday in the league, and um, you could go back through the lineups, and you can have a look at those lineups, and you can see there's different players playing, um, and you're wondering why. Um, there's no cohesion. There's no, there's nothing, there's nothing there, and uh, very frustrating. And when you go to a game, and you know, <laughs> the joke going around was, "Geez, who's playing this week, or who's playing next week, or you know, um, because uh, it's." I, 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 you probably can hear from what I'm. I, I'm lost for words in, in what I say about Bray this season. It hasn't been good off the pitch. Hasn't been good on the pitch. Hasn't been good. Um, and the direction that the direction that we're going is um. I don't know where we're going. I don't. I don't know what the next the next step is. Um, does the management team leave? Do they stay on? Um, if they stay on, have they got a plan for next season in terms of players that they bring in? You know, because it has been said by the management team uh, on local radio multiple times this season that we don't just don't have the players. Um, but that's not a good brought... thing to be saying local radio, though, either that we don't. No, have you're, players, you're, you're throwing players, and the players have been thrown under the bus multiple times this season. I personally uh, think there's actually better players at Bray than their actual positions suggest, though. They haven't got the best out of what they have either. Is the point? Hundred percent. But as I said, how do you get the best out of players if they're being played out of position? If like poor old Daryl Lynch has got minimum min, minimal minutes this season, and he's up there, I think I think he's still our top goal scorer. I'm not sure on that. Um, let Rob Manley go to Galway. Uh, Sean Callan left earlier on the season. Jamie Hollywood left, went to Lucan United. Um, Curtis Bourne left, retiring from professional football. Um, is playing for a Bluebell now. I think you know uh, players have left. And the club just utter silence. Michael Kelly went to Carlisle. It was it was shouted from the rooftop that oh look at our player he's gone to Carlisle United. That's because, yeah. Um, you know, so it's exactly like he it's because he's moving on to bigger and better things or whatever. But yeah, yeah, very disappointing. Um, I know I know Gavin uh, has said stuff about Bray and um, look, I think it's it's it's. It's simple to say. I think we've been the laughing stock of the league this season. Um, there's been under 16s banned from the ground, drones banned from the ground, flags banned from the ground. Um, now, hopefully, all the the shit that has happened off the pitch in terms of um, kind of trouble in the stands has stopped. Um, At least that's something, yeah. It seems to have stopped, but you know. People just it doesn't seem that people want to go anymore to the games. And that's that's a major concern. Look at Cork City, they're gonna have six and a half thousand at the last game of the season. I know they've won the league, but um 
under Niall O'Driscoll, we had we were in we were touching one thousand five hundred at games, and um, now we're probably lucky to get a couple of hundred at a game, uh, and that's very worrying. Um, I I I I don't know what more to say, Keith. To be honest with you, prediction for the game, Keith. I th- I said last week for the Cove game. I think I thought we'd get something, but look, at long at long be Cork at the weekend, but Cork will want to finish on a high here, mm. um, and it's uh it's very worrying. Um, it's very worrying. I'm saying I'm saying that, but it's the last game of the season. Are you worried? Like, you, I mean, you know what? You probably know what's coming. We, I know what's coming. Um, I think Cork will win by three or four here. Gavin, they will want to end in a high, won't they? Yeah, they will, and I suppose, I suppose it'll depend actually, Keith, what he's going to do in terms of the lineup as well. Do you know, is he going to stick with what he done last week? Even though obviously they're probably been back to full training this week, but um, to be interesting to see, will he? You know, will the, we say the first eleven, for want of a better word, start, or will he just leave the lads that are only kind of on the, you know, that are only on the fringes? Will he, will he keep those players on and just maybe he might bring in a couple of new fellas? Like like as you said yourself, he might start Marco Manny on Friday night. You know, um, I think actually, Gavin, to be honest with you, I think he might actually start the general team that's kind of won them the league. To be honest with you, as yeah. a kind of a, a, tr- a thank reward, you a tribute, whatever you want to call yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And apparently, actually, as well, I, I heard on the grapevine as well uh, last week that um, I know Keel Menton will be delighted to hear this, but apparently ah. Mark, Mac- Mark McNulty is starting on goal and he's actually coming off after 22 minutes. Apparently, this is true. And he's actually, he's going to announce that he's finished. He's gone from the club. So after 22 minutes, he's going to come off because he's been with the club 22 years. Unreal, though, that, so, isn't it? Yeah, so apparently yeah. that he's going to come off. I heard that now in the grapevine uh, last week. No, I, I don't know if it's true or not, but we'll have to wait I and mean, see. Because, as you said yourself, like, you know, no matter what it, it, no matter what division or whatever league you win, it's it's important that you celebrate it. Absolutely. We'll move on to Galway and Longford Town. And uh, this is essentially a dress rehearsal for the playoff, which is a bit... Um, it's it's going to be a strange one for both teams, I think, because uh, it's very unlikely that these aren't going to meet each other um, the next week. I think the 4th of November is the first playoff, isn't it? I believe so. The first leg, isn't it? Is that right? I don't know. I think it's in around that, all right. Yeah. In around that. Anyway, if I'm wrong, it's in around that. Anyway, but the point is, it's going to be Galway and Longford, I think. And Galway, you mentioned on the review show that, uh, and we mentioned before, Keith, that it was important that Galway found some kind of momentum. They didn't find it against Wexford either. Um, in this one, you're kind of thinking you don't want to show all your cards, but then again, what cards have they shown? Like, you know what I mean? They, <laughs> they kind of want to show a bit of form coming into this game, regardless of being a dress rehearsal. Longford, um, from their point of view, are a little bit hiding in the long grass, a little bit, Keith. Yeah, I was talking to a Longford player at the Bray game on Friday, and um, I just mentioned that they've rested a couple of players in the last couple of weeks, and they uh, he said, um, he said he doesn't know how it's gonna go next next week, like um, which he's obviously holding his cars close to his chest as well, you know. Um if I was if I was either manager, I would I would just rest players. Like you're gonna finish where you're gonna finish. Mm. So you're <laughs> it's crazy, you're almost resting players to play the same your resting players play the same opposition. Um, you know, so um you know, if one of the teams went strong and they, they better weaken team, like, you know, you're beating you're you're beating a team that you're not going to play the following week anyway. Yeah. So yeah. um so uh yeah it's um I don't know. I suppose from Gold's point of view though, they have been missing Conor McCormick, who's been a loss and he's been missing. Um I'd argue he probably should start the game. He probably needs the minutes, you know? Yeah, yeah, I like Conor McCormick. I mean he done a bit of leadership as well in the middle of the park, I think. Yeah, he's he's dogged and we always had the argument too, it's a better player. Um, Connor McCormick or Connor Clifford. Um, I think I think they're. I, I they're personally prefer I prefer McCormick if I'm honest with you overall yeah, as an not, overall midfield player. He seems to be more dogged, you know. He's mm. he he gets stuck in. You know, Connor Clifford can get stuck in as well. Oh, but, yeah. yeah, you're right. Um, I think I think uh, we'll discuss the playoffs in a couple of weeks or whatever, mm. you know. But yeah. um, is it an important game? It's very hard to discuss these games when they don't mean anything really, you know. Um. I think this will be a drab draw. Um, I, I don't think I don't think any of them are going to show any of their cards. Um, you know what the funny give, thing is, Keith, and just have to check very quickly there, Galway still have the best home record in the league, believe it or not. Yeah, it's mad, isn't it? It's mm. mad. 
it just goes to show you how good Cork City were away from home. Um, that they're that they're top of the league, but uh, yeah, I don't know because um, you know, we've we've heard a couple of rumblings with go fans and they're not happy and this that and the other and you know who who takes who takes their season by the scruff of the neck and says like that's the type of player you'd expect Conor McCormick to to be taking it taking it by the scruff of the neck and say lads come on come on we need we need to mm-hmm. up our performance here but um there's a couple of players that just aren't. Cutting the mustard at the moment, and uh, John Caulfield will be really concerned with that. Mm. Yeah, Gavin, how are you seeing it? Obviously, as I said, they're going to be playing each other in the playoffs in their next game. Um, how would he prepare for such a game from both? Do you know, sets do you know, of... do you know what I do you know? What I think John Caulfield will actually. I think he'll change the eleven. I think he'll really? play. Yeah, I think he. Well, I think what he does, is he'll change as much as he can. Like we say, the subs again, the these fringe players that don't really get their game. I think he'll do that out of um, a psychological thing because that'll be right up his street. You know, he'll like, you know, he'll he'll play fellas that, you know, that are on the fringes or a young fella or something like that. You know, just to, you know, in that sense, so that Longford don't go in and say, right, you know, we can like we like Conor McCormick and they might pick up a couple of things from him in the game that they think that they can look in their video analysis when it comes to the playoffs. But so they mightn't even play him. He mightn't even be on the bench. So. But don't be surprised in that sense if, if John makes six or seven changes. Mm. That that was kind of my that's my thinking behind it anyway. Um, so I don't think it'll be anything to go like if Longford win the game, it could actually be it, it, like a reverse psychology sense to Galway. Do you know what I mean? Because if they throw the weekend team and Longford win, do you know Longford you can't judge the game then by that. You know, so it could be. There, my phone rang. Sorry. <laughs> my phone rang. It's fucking John Caulfield. It's John Caulfield. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gavin, yeah. don't be giving away the secrets. We had the discussion when we yeah. met up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah Conor, Conor McCormick is actually behind that there. <laughs> so well, he might be it. because he's not very tall. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, he's just take on Wexford, and I suppose this is disappointing. <laughs> This, this game actually lads you know that this is a disappointing game because uh we discussed this i think um a couple of months ago and we were looking at this saying this could be a massive game treaty and wexford they're both close to each other you know but treaty are obviously in the playoffs six points clear wexford they finish ahead of them so um they can't finish ahead of longford either so they had their cup game last week in which uh, they put in a valiant effort to be fair but i'd imagine they'll probably rest certainly the likes of the corn and armshaw and players like that but um, Wexford would be disappointed that they're not going into this game with an opportunity to get into playoffs, Keith, I think. Absolutely. Uh, pretty good season up to... Yeah. I mean, they had a really good run uh, during the summer where I think they went nine unbeaten. Um, Including fantastic. a brilliant cup win as well like in Sligo. A cup win in Sligo, yeah, absolutely. And then uh, the form just seemed to fall off a cliff and I don't know what it was. It was players went off form and but I think, and I know we joke all the time, Jack Doherty was out for a couple yep. of games. And, you know, he's he's the man. He's the go-to man for them. He's the he's kind of the assist maker as such. And um, he was out for those games. And they may have missed him there. Um, but look, they, they've, they have the nucleus of a good squad there. Uh, if they can hang on to them and build around them. Uh, I think they could, and it is disappointing. You're right, because yeah. this could have been a blockbuster. Imagine this game, last game of the season, and you're you're playing each other to see who qualifies for the playoffs. Um, but uh, again, uh, Tommy Barrett, what will Tommy Barrett do? Like, I mean, they they're all already guaranteed um, fifth spot. Will he rest players? Will he want players? Um, I want certainly players? don't think he'll risk his. Um... Better play like Ender Curran's got 19 goals in all competitions. He's not going to risk it like him. Can't play. I mean, you need you need your top players uh, for the playoff game, but um, you know, have they got a big enough squad that they can actually do that? We don't know. Um, but yeah, it'll be interesting. It's a tough old playoff they have, but um, mm. uh, Wexford boys, you know, very disappointed. Ian Wayne will be absolutely furious that they haven't uh, picked up a couple of more points in the last couple of games. Absolutely, Gavin, because they finished comfortably ahead of the team in seven. Like, they're 11 points ahead of Cl- uh, Clear at Bray. And, uh, although that said, Keith's right and the points are making. That said, 
the vast improvement on Wexford seasons over the last few seasons where they've either been bottom pretty much or second bottom and adrift a lot of the time. So something to build on there, isn't it? Yeah, like I've said that as well. And I mean, we we, we played them. We played them down there. I went down to watch them there early in the season there. And uh, like we only beat them 1-0 down there. And I think was it a, was it a nil all draw, I think, down there as well, I think. And, mm, it and um, was a nil nil. Like, uh, like, you know, you have to take comfort from that and take positives out of it. Um, you know, they're, they're a nice side and uh, like that, I think Wexford are probably kind of two or three players short of being a decent team, you know, there's not much in their firm. Like, they, you know, they have, they have the, they have the attacking side sorted anyway. And, you know, Luka Lovic is, is, is good in midfield as well from, so I think, um, you know, I, I, I think that, I think, I think, or he's with fucking, who am I getting confused now with? Sorry. Uh, no, Luka Lovic, you're right, yeah. Yeah, I am right, aren't I? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah right. He, yeah, I was getting confused there for a second. I was like, oh my God. But like, I, they have it. I just think like that, there are two or three players probably short of a, of a team that'll actually push next year. And like, as you said, it, it could have been a cracker of a game. And like, mm. I know, he found about Jack Doherty, but like, as I said, he missed probably five or six weeks there or going back up to about two weeks ago. Mm. And he, like, that that could have been a difference in a lot of games when you're picking three points up instead of one or zero. So like, it could have been could have been the difference in that, like you know, and I think, I think to be honest, I'd be surprised to be still with him next season. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see for Trishy. Like again, like no matter what they do now, um, again, fantastic season. Like second season in the league as such, they finished in a playoff place again. They got to the FAI Cup semi final. Um, unbelievable work by Tommy Barris, and I think the work they're trying to do down there. Um, is obviously very good, but what they've done in terms of the league table in the two seasons has been a bonus to the work that they're actually trying to do and build, you know. Yeah, and like I mean, um, I think if they like, I don't know, another thing as well, like I think, like I remember I went down to watch against City, beat them down there comfortably, and you know, I know it's small things that make a difference, but if they could get the pitch sorted out, like the 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 pitches, the pitches. It's a mess at times. Like I mean, we were down there that day, and it was like, no, it was at the beach. It was like it being at a beach, you know. And uh, like for 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 that sort of level to be playing mm-hmm. at that level, you know, you need to get things like that sorted, especially with fellas, because you know, fellas get injured quite easily in situations like that. And you know, when you're playing at that level and you want a bit of consistency, and you especially in your home games, like you know, it's important that you have your your home grown set up and and have everything as best as possible, but. I mean, if that if that was just that time, I don't know, but definitely get that there. early on, Gavin. Sorry, that early in the season. It was, yeah, it was, Keith. I know treaty treaty's first few games were postponed because of the pitch, weren't they? They were actually, if we remember at the start. Remember, they were about, but they didn't start, and that's about three or four weeks into the season or yeah, something like that. Them and Longford, I think, had problems, didn't they? Early, yeah, on. Longford yeah. had issues too, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and as you said there, Keith, yeah, um, or two of you said it there, like, yeah, and like. I remember down there that day, I think it was around March, was it February or March, I think, and I remember there was a corner ball and I was standing kind of just behind the corner flag and we think I think Kevin O'Connor whipped it in. And like basically, I'm not lying, like when he hit the ball, the sand just came straight at, you know, <laughs> like that's, you know, for, for, for that, sort, like that, that can cause injury. And I know it's a small thing, but when it comes to players and that, like, get your home set up sorted and, you know, they'll improve on that again next year if they can get the pitch sorted. And, and it's, it'll only bode well for them, you know, for next season. And it's been a fantastic so season. So if you're going to a game at Markets Field, wear a pair of goggles. Is that what you're saying, Gavin? That's it, yeah, yeah. That, that's it, yeah. We're bring, bring, your, uh, bring your swim shorts and everything and, and you know, go, bring your speedos with you. Um, but, like, to be fair to them as well, like, I, I expected the, the game against Derry, I expected it to be a bigger scoreline. So, I mean, that, that like, you, they have to look at that as, as a positive. I mean, just losing two one to to Derry up in the brandy. Well, that's a that's a very positive result. So they've huge they've huge things to build on. And fair play to Tommy Barrett for that. Yeah, final game is uh, obviously Cove finished their season. By the way, in case anyone's wondering, Waterford FC take on Athlone Town at the RSC. And uh, I'm gonna say something. I don't know if it's controversial or not. Cork have obviously won the league. Waterford have actually somehow got to win in four points from them for a long time of the season. They're well behind Cork and Galway. We said, ah, they've no chance of getting anywhere near them. But they have got near Cork as such, you know what I mean? But I, I actually believe that there's more Premier Division quality players in the Waterford side than there is in the Cork City side, believe it or not. Keith, would you agree with that? 
Yeah, um, we discussed it a few weeks ago. I think you were, I think you were on holiday, Keith. Um, that Waterford and Cork played each other twice within a couple of weeks of each other, and um, because obviously the postponed game was replayed, mm. and Waterford got a point. I think out of those two games, if they had been reversed, they would have been obviously closer or even have taken over Cork City. So it's fine margins, isn't it? Mm. Um, but you are right. There is there is more quality there. Um. Premier Division quality than than um than some of the like I, I think certainly Waterford, more Premier Division experience as such like you know what I mean yeah I think if, if Waterford get either UCD or um Harps. or Harps in the playoff I think they beat them quite comfortably I think um going forward they're fantastic uh they've been a bit rocky at the back in the last couple of weeks but uh mm. like Killian Campbell um seems to have like I mean they only went one 0 down to mm. shells at the weekend so. Um, certainly going forward they're brilliant and I think they might be top goal scorers in the league I'm not sure of that but yeah, um, yeah like I mean Phoenix Patterson's probably going to get the, the first division uh, golden boot um, but yeah no I, I mean again what's what's um, what's Cyril going to do for this game is he going to rest players is he not um, because the playoffs obviously quite close but um, yeah it'd be, it'd be very very interesting what he does Again, I actually, might... I actually take Waterford's point of view. I think it's more important that they try and keep up the momentum and if maybe take some players off in the second half or something like that. You know what I mean? So, you know what I mean? They lost to Shelburne in the cup, obviously, and um, you know there was I won't go into that because we went into it in the show. But um, you want to pick up another little win, maybe just to bring into the playoffs. You know that kind of way and keep that momentum going that they've generally had for the last month or two. Yeah, and you'd be hoping, obviously, the crowd that they got for the Shelburne game that mm. they return for for the game this Friday and the playoff game, you know, because, yeah. I mean, they deserve it really because they've had a good season, and just like Treaty. Um, they're going into the playoffs and they got to a semi-final. So, um, very, very interesting. I think they'll comfortably be at long, whatever side they put out. I that though, at long, funnily enough, have won for the last five games. I don't know where that form has actually come from, to really? be honest with you. Um, um, I suppose from their point of view, the season, I suppose... You know, what, what can they get from this game, really? Because apart from, you know, obviously trying to put in a performance, because they look to try and finish out of Bray, ultimately, which would be just crazy, actually, you know, with, with the season that Athlone had, especially earlier on in the season there. Gavin, Me, is it? Gavin, oh, yeah. Right. yeah, um, yeah, it's like, we, we've said this about them. Like, like we, we say this about teams, we're straight up about it. There's no point in coming on here and, you know, there's no point in coming on here and praising a team every weekend they're not winning matches or they're, they're giving away stupid goals because like you know like especially like I, I'm very critical crit, critical of Cork City when things don't go there when they say it as it is and um, you know and, and to be fair to loan as we said the last four or five games have been excellent Tom Slew has been absolutely superb from he's been um, good all season to be fair it's just even when they're in poor like you know what I mean it's been a shining light all season for them you know look it, it's if they can get their house in order, obviously, to you know that there is things going on behind the scenes that we don't know about. And as you said today, we shouldn't know any about that, should be kept in behind the scenes. You know, in general, it should be in every club, it should be that way. Um, but hopefully, they'll get things organized for next year. And, um, you know, like if they can get it organized then for next year, then hopefully, look if you know they'll win the league by 30 points, you know. so <laughs> Keith, I think, I think in fairness, we we do these shows weekly, Gavin, and I mean, we're we're kind of only catching highlights, five six minutes of, of games, you know. So we don't see what's happening over the course of ninety minutes, mm. and it's very it's very hard. Like I mean, unless we had a League of Ireland LOI TV pass to watch every game or record every game or whatever. Mm. You know, it's very difficult to. Well, to what you'd have to do is there. You'd actually have to say technically. There's four games on this week, for example, and that's just the first division. Never mind the Premier, by the way. Yeah. And um, you'd have to pay for all of those games. Obviously, watch and then watch them back. Yeah, and it's. I mean, everyone's doing this voluntary. You know what I mean? So, like, I mean, you, <laughs> we all have families and everything like that. You know, we're not we're not professional. We're doing it for the love of the League of Ireland. You know, mm. we're not we're not getting paid or anything like that. So, you know, you can't sit down and watch ninety minutes and then you if you wanted to do that, like. Like they do on match of the day, they're rewinding stuff and they're oh he did that and he did that. It's very difficult to catch anything within five six minutes of highlights, you know. Yeah. But that's what we're, that's what we have. That's yeah. that's you know yeah. 
Like, I mean, when Gavin's at Cork games or if I'm at Bray, Bray games, I could be out of Pat's game. Someone else could be out of Dr- the game. JP could be out of Derry game. Yeah. So we're going to act- talk. We're going to get whoever's at the game to discuss the actual game more so. Yeah, yeah. And you're, you you can talk about what you're seeing at that game. But, you know, when you're coming home and you're doing a, a, a package on a Sunday or Saturday, uh, Monday night and you only have those six minutes, like, you have to understand as well. Some clubs don't even have highlights. That for happens us. as well, yeah. yeah. I mean, the amount of times I, I get on to you, Keith, and be saying, uh, um, can you see the highlights of this game? And I know oh, I didn't see them on YouTube, Keith. This is two days later as well. Like, we can't wait for four yeah. days to do the show because that, that that's gone now, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's on yeah. to the next show. So um, yeah. some clubs don't even do that. So it's it, it's impossible to be able to do that, to be fair. But on, but on at loan, I mean, uh, if they can build on, on, on the form... They need they a manager. Out. They need to bring in a manager and they, they need, need to try and... Get that right place, from their point of view. And to put a structure. They need a structure yeah. there. And the manager can bring in the players that he wants to bring in. But there are players there, and we've mentioned them, Alua and Lennon. Um, if you can hang on to them. Yeah. And Manol. Get the Manol. The Manol as yeah, as well. bring yeah. Ender back next season. Yeah. Um, I think he's, he's done really well since he came in. Although he was on the bench in that run. Uh, he played two games and he was on the bench. I'm not sure why, but uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, at loan, uh, Alua won't be there next season. So I'm just, I'm just putting it out there. Um, very surprised. It'd be, very it'd be great surprised. if he could hang on to him, but he won't be there next season. He, he could play in the um, bottom half of the first, or the bottom oh. half of the Premier League. Or certainly one of the top clubs, oh, let's say, yeah. in the in the first division as well. Yeah. Prediction, yeah. guys, Gavin. Which I'm going to go with two one to Waterford, um, and I think Alua will score again. Funnily enough, Athlone, I was going to say 3 0, but then I realised Athlone score, don't they? So 3 1 Waterford. Oh, I got the same. 3 1 Waterford. Yeah. Good well, stuff, think- guys. Thanks very much for coming on, as usual. Gavin's going to say something, are you? Yeah, I think, I think like, just in connection with that, I think for the FA Cup final, for all together, we should all get microphones and we could do a live, then, do you know what I mean? So we'll see everything. Live. Yeah, we'll do a live. live. Show, lads. Mm-hmm. You can do your Robbie Keane accent. I didn't see you. Yeah, lads, I didn't see you. We'll leave it there, guys. Let us know what you think in the comments. Hope you enjoyed this one. Subscribe to the channel and uh, hit your bell notification button. Gavin's going to talk to his missus now. See us. I can't. She's asleep.